In the next lesson on the quarter stuff, I want to address one technique which is uh, shown by Wyatt, where he is saying that you can um, hit away the staff of your opponent. So we are standing in an inside guard, and he says, okay, you hit as hard as you can on the staff of your opponent, so that it maybe is even flying out of his hand, and then he's open for, for your technique. Okay, so from, from the long from the long grip, I will do it like so. And when he says you can also do it with the half stuff, then it works even better because I have uh, better uh, leverage, especially when my opponent is in the long grip. So long grip and the half stuff grip. And then the half stuff grip, it's important that you don't hit sideways, but that you hit downwards. It was the same impact, but you see the stuff is flying away. The technique itself is good when you train it, especially the half stuff technique, but I have to say in inspiring and free fighting, it doesn't work that well. So, what very often happens, if I do a long cut number two and my opponent sees that in a spiral situation, he will just slip back, let me pass, and then hit me. Okay, so because inspiring, all these small snapping techniques work quite well. So when I do this in the long grip, I have a problem, I try to hit away the step. Okay. The half staff, if he is in the long grip, the half staff grip, this can work a little bit better because I'm quicker, because of the shorter grip. However, even then it's quite uh, difficult, okay, because he can do the same thing. Okay, it just slips back. If he's in half staff position as well, you, you should not do this uh, anyway, okay, because he's even quicker. So, how can we address this problem? Um, in sparring, if I'm in a half stuff grip and my opponent makes, for example, a quick cut to my forearm, if I then try to do this, I have a problem because I'm not fast enough. Okay, once again, okay. So I have a problem here. So there are quicker ways if he attacks my forearm. With my back edge and, and what we what we discussed in the earlier lessons. If I am in the long grip, then this is even worse. If he tries to attack my forearm, I cannot really do that. Okay. So as a counter technique, this also doesn't work this way. If I want to try it anyway, if I am the master, he's in the long grip, and he tries to attack my forearm, I can step back and hit it away, but then again, as you can see, I hit it away, now I took away some power of my, of, because of my step, and now I have a long way to come back, especially when I'm in half step, so you can just slip back and hit me or thrust. So this is also not very good, stepping back, trying to hit it him away, because he has too much time. What might work though in a sparring is when I step to my side in kind of an outside guard. Because then I have the full power to try a fast uh, cut to my forearm. Then I can try this. However, I have to admit it's quite risky, it's quite dangerous. Okay, there are quicker ways. As I showed before, here, this is much quicker. Okay, it can cause a lot of damage. So honestly, this lesson is much more about to show how this lesson looks in Zachary Wilde's manual, but that inspiring, honestly, similar to his leg attacks, um, in this context, this, this doesn't work quite well. But what works not bad, quite fine, is if my opponent tries to thrust 
under my under my guard. Then I can step back and hit it out of the way with a hard stuff. Again, I could use this with a back, of course. Okay, it's quicker, especially when I step to the side. However, here, here it can work because if he does a very long thrust, pushing his hands forward as well. Okay, then even when I step back, this works quite nice. I have enough power against the thrust, and then I come back with my attack. So this can work. Also, it can work if someone tries to give you a very long thrust with both hands. Because then you have much more power. Again, faster and quicker way is with this motion. But this back edge motion or back of my step motion, you always are a little bit in danger if you maybe do the mistake of stepping forward or if he's quicker than you expected that he is still thrusting here in between. Just like in small sword fencing. Okay? Now he got me. And if this is a pike or a bayonet, this is even worse. So, even if I step to my, to my inside with a traverse, I might be not quick enough. So then, this is a nice, uh, is a nice thing to do. Because now I have enough time. However, um, depending on the situation, I could also use this when I am trying to, for example, in half stuff, stepping forward and cut with an outside. So I don't want to, to you know, uh, hit away the step, but I want to do an outside cut or even a long step here. And then I realize he's stepping back, okay, and tries to parry this. Then I can still use my cut and hit him. So this is another opportunity. For well, I am in the long grip, he's in the long grip. I want to attack his forearm and he is stepping back, tries to do a parry. Then I just hit through against this step. So not as an opening technique, like we're standing here, okay, on guard, fight begins, because then he just slips back or does, uh, does any kind of counter if I try to hit the step. But if I try to hit him and he's stepping back, it automatically turns into this technique which is described by White. Okay, so if you see he's in the guard and you don't want to do a feint, because of course with a feint this is a different kind of animal, but if I wanted to do a solid cut to his forearm or his head with an outside cut, don't stop it because you see, oh no, he's on guard. Unless you want to just hit his hand or thrust forward or something like that. But another opportunity is I do a powerful cut and he tries to parry it. But I hit his step and now he's home. And the same from the half stuff. If he's in the long grip and I'm in the half stuff grip, I want to attack um, his forearm. He steps into an outside guard. I hit. I hit his uh, step and then he's over. Okay, one more time. So instead of stopping my attack because the, the target of my attack is closed, I just hit his guard. And then this works really nice. Okay, so you have to, to put this technique described by Wilde into the fighting context. If you just try to do it as an opening technique in a sparring, it won't work, honestly. But if you put it into the context of a hard carry against a thrust, or turning your attack into hitting a step out of the way for a second attack, then it works quite well. But one thing I wanted to mention is that um, in one of our earlier lessons about pushing away the opponent, I bet that hitting here on the step is uh, not a good thing to do. So you could ask now, instead of cutting to his inside, you could ask why don't I cut you know, directly on his inside? Well, the answer is, is easy because if I do this, he just slips back 
down or up, and thrust or does it cut. So I don't have really something of it. So better what we talked about is to push here and use this kind of pushing motion. But what you can do so is if you are quick, you could go under his guard and use the back. It is a risk because, as I said, you should only go under the guard to thrust okay, in the bind. However, if you, for example, threaten him here a little bit and he raises his guard, then you could go with the back of your step and uh, hit him out of the way. Okay? This is one thing you can do. So, going slightly under and doing this. And this is just the same technique we used for defense, but now for offense. So, if he takes my form, okay, this is the same concept. But I could try to do it um, um, in the offense. So, threatening a bit here and then going forward. Okay. So, you do a quick sharp motion. So you do a quick, sharp motion and hit him out of the way. That works also. Now the question, what is with the outside guard? Do I have the same things here? Okay, what I could try to do is going over his guard, using the back and hit him away. What I can do though is if I step forward and hit with the inside guard. But here again, instead of hitting, the way safer variation is the push, because you feel what's happening. If I just hit him, he has kind of a signal, oh, he's trying to get my guard out of the way, so he will slip back. Okay? If he said quick, even if I get his step, you see, he can just pull back. So it is much better from here to do what we talked about before to slide down here. This is this is this is already hard enough, but just hitting from here with with a step gives him an, an impulse that he has to slip back into counter. The same is with this kind of motion that I use my back edge. Okay, this is way too long. What I could try is hitting him here, raising and he says, oh he's coming there and then I try to go uh, on his uh, on his outside. That might work. Okay, then I come here. If you raise up, but you see, I have a lot of way to go. Okay, so I don't know if it's really worth the effort. But this is one thing you could try if you want to do this kind of back edge motion with the outside guard going here, and then maybe. You can go under here and thrust. Okay? Or you can go here. Or if he is holding his, his inside guard like this, just go to his fingers. So this, this could work a little bit from, from the outside guard.